This is Karen E. Klein, Smart Answers columnist at BusinessWeek.com. Today, I'm talking to John Trosco. He's an organizational expert, principal of Organizing LA. He works primarily with entrepreneurs and small business owners and home office business owners. And thanks for joining me, John. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you very much. Hey, why do entrepreneurs need to get organized other than the obvious benefit of not having piles of mess everywhere? What's what's the benefit? (laughs) I call it pile destruction. I would say let's look at the cost of a minute, how much you're being paid. I think if the average home office entrepreneur is paid $50,000 or $60,000 a year, what is that equal to per minute? Hmm. And how much time are you wasting with tasks that have nothing to do with running your business effectively? And I think people don't really think about that. And I'm not talking about emergency tasks. I'm talking about tasks like dinging of your email and getting interrupted at the door for mails coming, those kinds of things. And I think that when you're looking at the effectiveness of your schedule, what things are you doing that you can eliminate? What kind of organizing jobs have you done? Give us some idea of who calls you in to come and organize their office. Oh, gosh. Generally, it's people who are on the go. It's men and women that have small businesses. A lot of the businesses are in their homes. I've worked for people that have run bakeries, restaurants. I've worked for a fluff and fold. A lot of writers, because I'm in Hollywood, we have tons of writers here. We have makeup artists, costume people. I've worked for school superintendents and a lot of realtors and a lot of mortgage brokers who manage a lot of information, a lot. It comes and goes, and they need to pull a lot of various sales materials together to track everything and make sure that they're being effective. Clients can't pay for an entrepreneur's lack of disorganization. If you can't find a file and you're charging by the hour, that money has to come from somewhere and it usually comes out from your bottom line. So they recognize that and they'll call me and they'll say, I don't know what to do. Is there a common denominator? Do you often find that people who are just terribly disorganized have similar thing in their background, have something in common, anything like that? I would suggest that they may be a perfectionist and maybe they don't know it or maybe they do know it. I think that people who have a view of the way something should be take a lot of time to get anything done and it's not really about getting it done it's about like making it look a certain way and I think that's kind of destroying a lot of entrepreneurs they could be waiting for the perfect desk they're working from their kitchen table and it takes forever for them to get the desk and so they'll never have a desk and I have clients that it takes a year to get a desk and it shouldn't and then they also they don't really dedicate any time at the end of the day to get organized for the next day And 10 minutes could be great if they did it. That's a very good tip, just to spend a few minutes preparing for the next day. What other tips would you give small business people for organizing their space? And I know a lot of people that work at home don't have a lot of space. Right. There's so many different tips that I could give. There's electronic organizing. There's time management organizing. Then there's your physical space. So a few tips could be, I would suggest, do not multitask so much. Put Mm -hmm. limits and section off your time in your office. An hour for emails and no more. They actually have email programs now that will shut your email down. So you can't use it more than an hour a day or something. And I've heard of it. I haven't used it. And definitely turn off that dinger. I would suggest just put in reading time each week, an hour making networking calls, but no more than that. Some other suggestions I would tell you is biggest thing is paper sitting on a client's desk. And that's generally the biggest reason why somebody calls me in is they don't know what to do with the paper. And especially if a small business person works from home, they've got their personal mail and they've got business mail all intermixed together. And they're trying to sign their report cards or things for their kids to take back to school and everything is just everywhere. So one of the very first things that I do is usually the paper is the trouble spot. We take everything off the desk and I I mean take all the paper and I dump it in a box Mm -hmm. and we get out of the office. I think getting a fresh perspective on their office and how it works is better when they just move out to do some of the work, especially when they're trying to just go through things. And that way they're not getting distracted by other things in the office, like their computer and things like that. And then we move to the dining room table or sometimes out on the patio by the pool if we can, and we go through things and we dump it out and then we start making piles. And I'd say more times than not that that's really effective for a business person to do that. Yeah, it's interesting how some years ago we were told there wasn't going to be any more paper, and it seems like ever since that 
prediction was made, we have more paper than ever to deal with in our lives. Well, there's interesting statistic that I know of. The average American receives over 49,000 pieces of mail in their lifetime. And a third of that, I think they've realized that is junk mail. So that's over 16,000 pieces. And that's about 3.8 pieces a week. If you live till you're 80, that's a lot of mail. It's a lot of paper. You've got to eliminate it before it even comes in. And it really means one of the things that I tell clients is, you know, you need a trash can where you open your mail. If you're opening your mail by the front door, you've got to figure out a way to get a trash can in there, even if you use a drawer in your credenza for a trash can, just so you can separate the payment envelope and the oxide envelope. So you just have what you need and you can staple it together and then you're done. You have 50% less mail instantly because you've reviewed it all quickly. Instead of letting it pile up and then getting back to it at some future date, which may never come. Right. A lot of people call me because I work with people in their homes and a lot of people see me as a luxury. Some people call me a hand holder and some call me some sort of organizing messiah. But (laughs) if a client generally calls me because they're just really stuck and they need to get to the next level, so they need some sort of transformation of their space. And I tell them that it did not take 10 minutes for them to get to where they are right now. It's not going to take 10 minutes for them to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And they need to be present and participating. I think generally, in most cases, when I work with a client, it's a lot easier for me and the client to organize an office because there's not a lot of sentimentality in your office. It's about getting the job done. It's about clearing the space, going through the papers and coming up with a system. I think people are more willing to invest in their office because they're in there so long and maybe not invest in the garage or their linen closet or their pantry because they can just go in there, grab what they need, and they just kind of deal with it. But an office is really important. And the office is also tied to monetary productivity too. If you're more organized, you can actually make money. So I help people transition through that. Right. Like you said, it's not as painful as going through the kids' art projects or the old photos and things like that. Definitely not. Definitely not. And one thing I have noticed, too, that there are a lot of things missing in people's offices that Hmm. they don't even think about, things like using a labeler. I think a labeler is one of the best items that you can buy for your office. Dymo makes a great one. Yeah, Dymo, Brother P-Touch. People don't have file folders. I recommend file folders at a third cut, one position very easy. You write that down. You take that to your office supply store. They'll help you find it. You can get it online. Scissors, scotch tape stapler. A lot of people don't have that stuff. And there's something I love, incline mail sorters. So if you have manila folders, you can create some sort of hot file system on the top of your desk. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't have like a hook for their coat. So the coat goes on the edge of the chair. If you're meeting with clients and your stuff looks really sloppy, 3M makes great hooks now that don't require any nails on the wall or any kind of anchor system. They just go on with a special Velcro and glue and they don't leave any mark if you take them off. Shredders are great. People don't really think about the amount of personal information that they have in their office, of personal information of part-time employees, of clients. People put me in the I'm in a position of public trust. And one of the first things we do is talk about confidentiality of their information when I'm concerned, when I leave their office, but what are they doing to protect their client's information? And they don't really think about that. That's a big one when we're dealing with somebody making payments, credit card numbers, and that kind of thing. Yeah. And I think starting in someone's office where the problem is the worst. Like I said, grab the box, grab the paper, and sometimes you know just need to throw a big giant hula hoop or something in the room and then just let it land somewhere. I definitely suggest we get everything off the floor. Don't have anything on the floor. If it's on the floor, then you don't have the right kind of system for it to sit hmm. and live somewhere. There are several kinds of storage that I tell clients. I think there's four. One of them is hot files, which I mentioned before. Files are like tickler file system. It's really basic things that you need every single day to be effective at your desk. So to-do file, to-mail file, letters to write, bills to pay, people to call, business cards to enter into your database, that kind of thing. So something that's going to take your attention at least once a day. Right. 
exactly. And then there are project files, which is another section, generally last week's, this week's, or next week's files that you have for clients. Mm -hmm. So that way they're just they're accessible and you can grab them. And then the third category, which is usually the biggest, are reference files. Those are all the things that you don't really need to get to very often. And last one is deep, dark storage. Those are old tax records and, you know, those kinds of things. And now they have great services out there that can take a box of tax records and they can shrink wrap it. You can inventory it and they'll take it away from you and you pay a fee each month hmm. and they'll hold on to your tax records or whatever records you have or receipts or something like that. And for a small business owner, and like you were saying, if they're in a small room, I suggest that they use outside services whenever they can for storage so they don't have to keep absolutely everything in their office because really quickly their garage can become their storeroom, then they can't even park in the garage. There are so many great services and so much outsourcing that's available now. One other thing I want to ask for a company that's a little bit bigger and has some employees, how do you get the employees motivated to either to help you set up a system or to keep a system going? Totally, totally. In fact, I would really suggest, the big question I ask clients when I first start with them, even when I do a needs assessment, is who is going to maintain this space? Right. And just the fact of them saying me or my assistant, well, then if it's their assistant or even their housekeeper, if it's something simple, then we need to bring them in when we're creating the system so they have a little bit of ownership like the client does. Then they have some input and they feel like they're part of the process. They're not just being told what to do. And I think that works really well. I also think think that businesses should spend half a day a year, a full day would be great, even once a year every six months would actually six months would be ideal, having an office organizing day. Mm -hmm. I've recently, with the explosion of personal organization in the U.S., I've gotten calls from large businesses, nonprofit organizations that want to schedule a day. So I try to do some sort of education for the employees so they know what to do, how to do it, how to get organized in a general way, and then I'll do hands-on training all through the office that day. But businesses, when I walk in, sometimes the boss walks away and employees walk to me and they say, we've been wanting to do this for a long time, but they don't want to do it. And I feel bad. And so privately later, I'll tell the client this, and it's something that they never realized. And I'll hmm. say, I can create highly functioning, amazing systems, but your employees have ownership of the space. Right. Get them in the office break room. Get them in your filing cabinet. And don't be afraid to ask your assistant to hover over you to get you to do tasks. Hmm. I really believe that. I think managers and clients have this view that they're impermeable and they're supposed to look perfect and not ask for help. I think it's okay if your assistant comes in and sits with you while you go through your mail. And that way, maybe there's some pieces of the mail that they could learn to open on behalf of you to have you save time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of times, like you said, if the entrepreneur himself or herself is a perfectionist and has a lot of trouble, an employee may not be and may be much more suited to keeping things running. Thanks a lot for your help, John. I think the idea of a organizing day once or twice a year is a super one, and hopefully many of our listeners will agree. Well, one thing I wanted to say, Karen, if sure. I may, I have a blog online and I've got great tips. There's actually a section for a small businesses, business organizing tips, and people can check that out too. Super. Great. And is that under Organizing LA? www.organizingla.com. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thanks Great. so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you. This is Karen E. Klein from businessweek.com. 